Hello, and welcome to On Point, a podcast series of fresh thinking on the big topics for corporates and institutions. I'm Ross Walker, co-head of Global Economics and Chief UK Economist at NatWest Market, and this session is a Brexit update. Uh, the negotiations have been ongoing, and sentiment, I think it's fair to say, has has oscillated between moments of optimism and uh, perhaps moments of, of pessimism. So in the past week, uh, we had concerns about uh, a deal being done, headlines about a missed deadline, though in reality there there was no deadline. It, it, it was more of a, a marker post. Um, the, the formal legal deadline is, is 31st of December. And in practical terms, I, I think mid-December, with the European Parliament's full plenary session, where ratification of any deal would be uh, would be needed, uh, is is probably the the latest point for for actually getting a deal formally approved. And if you work backwards from that mid December date, uh, that means that a a trade deal text uh, may not surface until uh, the end of November or even early December. So, in our view, there are still a few more weeks of of haggling, posturing, um, optimism, pessimism, swinging sentiment before we get a little bit more clarity on the, the final outcome. Uh, but the, the, the shape of the deal is, uh, I think, becoming more visible. We've, we've had media reports detailing how uh, actually a lot of drafting is already taking place for the bulk of the agreement. And it, it, it's just a few issues, familiar issues, where the there are still some differences to be resolved. Um, issues around a, a level playing field in state aid, uh, fisheries access to, to UK waters, and um, uh, some, some governance and dispute resolution uh, procedures. Uh, so still some hurdles to, to clear, but it does feel like we are edging towards a deal, and in our view, the, the probability of of a deal by year end has probably edged up to to around 70 percent. It's it's not 90 or 95 percent. There's still still some points of disagreement, and, and the process is uh, a little opaque for financial markets. There's, there's only so much insider information, if you like, that, that that surfaces. But there is a sense that the the discussions are are more constructive, and, and some practical solutions are beginning to to emerge to to some of the remaining problems. Um, so in terms of the UK economy, uh, of course, we've, we've had developments this week, important developments over the past week on the, uh, the vaccine. Uh, this is clearly turning market sentiment. And in a sense, that is overriding uh, Brexit factors. Nevertheless, I, I think progress towards a Brexit deal will tend to reinforce that improved mood into year end. And although there will inevitably be some Brexit-related frictions in the new year, perhaps around new border checks, customs, software, and so on, um, if, if a deal is done, a zero tariff, zero quota deal for trading goods uh, with a few services add-ons, um, then, the, then we can probably muddle through the early part of the year. And to the extent that Brexit impacts the economy, it, it, it's likely to be over a longer period of time. Uh, 2021 is, I think, going to be dominated by uh, COVID vaccine developments, the extent to which social distancing restrictions can be eased and and business can get back to, to normal. Um, so our expectations next year, we have been nudging up our, our growth forecasts, but probably slightly faster growth as we move through the year and those restrictions uh, are eased. Um, but on the Brexit process, talks resume in the coming week in Brussels. And as I say, we're, we're really are eyeing the, the final week of November as the, the most likely point where an agreed trade deal treaty text emerges. So let me conclude there. Thank you for uh, listening to this On Point podcast. Please do subscribe to our channel to get future episodes and do follow us on social media for all our latest content. Thank you. Speak again soon.